One of the more popular things that we sell on our Etsy site are some pretty simple masks. And I made a video before about making masks, uh, but recently we get a lot of requests about um, our masks being used for Dread Pirate Robert costumes from Princess Bride. And we had somebody request that they make it a little bit more accurate to what was in the movie. Instead of having the little dip in the top, it just goes kind of straight across. So I kind of made up this pattern. Uh, and most of our masks, like this one, we have holes on the side and we just kind of put some leather lace in there to tie it onto people's faces. You can change it to elastic or whatever. But it got me thinking to look a little bit closer at the mask from uh, the Princess Bride movie. And this shape is okay, but without the holes, because it looks like in the movie, the masks are, uh, the mask is attached to a kerchief that he ties around his head and that they're all just one piece rather than putting a mask on, tying it on, and then putting a kerchief over top. So I'm just going to finish up the edges on these. Um, these have already been obviously cut out, cut to shape. Uh, my sister does a lot of that ahead of time for me. And it's been wet down and left to sit for a while. Because you want it, the water to actually soak deeper into the leather and make all of it moldable rather than just the upper layers. You want it to actually get into the fibers of the leather and you'll be able to shape it a little bit better. So I usually wet down a whole stack of them and let them sit for a while and then come back and shape them. And you should have almost a rubbery sort of texture and should kind of hold its shape when you bend it or move it some. But anyway, once we got our edges smoothed down enough, because this is going on somebody's face, you don't want anything rough there. Um, we're going to go ahead and try and shape this down on here. And pretty much it just pushing it into place, holding it down and across the bridge of the nose or across the front of the sides of the nose as you push down the cheeks or the brow. Now this one in particular has decided to be a little wrinkly here in the center. That's not really too much of a problem. And we can just take our slicker that we used on the edges. Let's move that back out. Once they're shaped, it's just a matter of sitting them somewhere to dry until they're completely dry and then I'll be able to paint them and meanwhile, I'll get the kerchief ready to put on there. Alright, now for the kerchief, I've got some black uh, it's cotton poly fabric. Uh, poly makes it a little bit stronger. It's thin but it looks very much like what the movie costume was, was probably cotton poly. Now it's 44 inches wide, which is a really good width uh, for this because that's a good length for the long edge of the triangle piece of kerchief. Um, so I just need to cut a triangle out like that, but the easiest way I found to do it is actually to cut four of them at a time because I'm cutting multiple ones. Because then you can just, do a little bit of geometry here. By folding the fabric that way. And then folding it this way. Now I have four layers of fabric here that are the triangle that I need. So from there, it's just a simple matter of cutting along those fold lines. Now this can be done with just a pair of fabric scissors. A rotary cutter on straight edge, straight lines like this is really useful. And once I've 
broadcast that. I just usually take scissors and cut just in the folds. Just like that, I have four of these triangles. Now I just have to sew with a zigzag stitch all the way around the edge. It'd be better to have a serger to do it, but um, I don't have one. So I'm just going to use a zigzag around the edge to bind the edges and keep them from fraying. And then it's just finishing up the mask and attaching this to it. Okay, of the three sewing machines I use pretty regularly, uh, this is the one that can be set up for doing multiple different stitches. It's the most technical, technologically advanced one I've got, basically. Uh, it's a Singer Futura, and they are really easy to set with a bunch of different stitches. So on this one, I'm using an over edge stitch, which is for stitching over the edge of something and binding it in. Uh, and I'm going to set it to a really wide stitch. Um, six millimeters wide. Yeah, we'll go with six. And as, as long as it'll go, which is three millimeters. And then with this machine, it's just a simple matter of sewing all the way around the edges. And this will do a stitch that's like a zigzag. It'll be a bunch of triangles. And there'll also be a stitch, a straight line. So the old way to do this was to do a bunch of, to zigzag the edge and then to come back and stitch a straight line of stitches. But with this machine, it's just a simple matter of feeding the cloth through it. And this machine even does where it can stop with the needle up, with the needle down, it can back stitch automatically, or it can even cut the thread off automatically. which is a really convenient feature. Okay, now that um, the masks are dry, which this is the next day from when I shaped them, uh, I'm gonna go over to the spray booth here that I've made and use an airbrush and paint them with acrylic paints to make them black. I'm not using leather dyes because leather dyes could, since they soak in, they could bleed off on people and they're gonna be wearing this on their face. We don't want somebody having raccoon eyes because of our mask. Uh, so, I use the paints because they don't come off as easily and they're also very easy to work with. Um, so just a quick hit with the airbrush and let it dry and then a clear coat finish of leather sheen over top of it to protect that paint later on. And then we'll sew the cravat onto or the kerchief, I keep calling it a cravat, the kerchief onto the top. Project. Um, I've got some black thread on my big leather stitching machine, which is what I'm going to use for this particular part of it. And I fold the kerchief in half to find the middle of the long edge. And I want to make sure that goes in the middle of the mask. And that's really all there is to it. I just kind of line up along the nose. I'm going to have it 
where it's hanging down across the face so that after I stitch it I can pull it back up over so it's got a rolled and kind of hides that stitch. But yeah, we're just going to roll that around and we could mess with getting it stuck in the right place with some double sided tape or something like that, but I'm not going to bother. We'll just take this, we're going to start with uh, a back stitch to start with, like you normally do for stitching. Stitch across and then a back stitch on the other side. Alright, get close to the edge. Switch it to a forward stitch. get pretty close to that edge. And then back up about three or four stitches. Okay. And then just that just flips over like that. And like I said, it kind of hides the stitches across there. 